you may know me as Hijabella. In July 2016, I was in a photograph with my grandmother, um, sheltering her from the rain with my hijab. It actually became phenomenal, not only in Singapore, but in other countries as well, for the very fact that a visually Malay woman is actually caring and sheltering a Chinese woman. Online, there were quite a few negative comments. A lot of people could not accept that a Chinese woman would have a Malay Muslim granddaughter. People actually mistaken me as her help or as her maid. But my Nai Nai would uh, correct them and say proudly that I'm her granddaughter, that I'm a teacher, I'm an NUS graduate. Like suddenly my portfolio comes out. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but this has become a norm so much so that whenever she, she and I are out together and she sees a familiar face before they can say anything, she does not ask them about their day, she does not tell me who they are even, she just tells the person from far away, this is my granddaughter. <laughs> Why soon? Your Baba know that I don't object. Then they bring your mama, come here. And people thought that is my maid. I said, no, that is my future daughter, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't eat pork here. So I clear everything. So in my house, what I buy, the meat all must be halal. As a free thinker, you have to accept. You have to make friends to everybody. This is what the Singapore said, multi-racial to, to be in harmony. Mm. When my Koko first knew that I wore the hijab, he was very taken aback and he didn't know how to react. That is one of the questions that came into the conversation at Chinese New Year, which is that, does that mean that because of this cloth, you are no longer going to be close to me or we won't have that bond anymore? I actually am very close to both sides of my family, my Malay side and as well as my Chinese side. My families were never um, exclusive. Perhaps that's why I'm culturally neutral. I've never seen it as anything more than just being family. Every year I get the same question. You celebrate Chinese New Year? Oh, then you also celebrate Hari Raya. The categories, I just don't fit anywhere. I'm like a platypus of the human race, right? I'm in no man's land. I don't fit in Chinese because I don't look Chinese. But I don't fit in Malay because I don't know how to speak Malay. <laughs> um, so because I'm in no man's land, I'm just lost. There is a miseducation in a sense that because Chinese New Year is a cultural thing, um, it is simplified that everything else is cultural. So they say, oh, um, Sakina, so you are Muslim and you celebrate Chinese New Year, so you are doing a sin. So they think that I do gambling. But fact is that I just do a lot of board games with my cousins. Sometimes we play uh, card games, but that doesn't mean it's gambling. Our education system is built on the sense that they want to be sensitive. So sensitive that they are so scared of actually touching waters that they haven't touched for very long. Even if our education system is not ready, they have to force themselves to be ready. I'm not a rarity nowadays. You know, there are many of people like me who are half Chinese, half Malay. They are strewn. They, are, they we no man's land is growing larger and larger and larger. I hope that instead of just assuming things that they think they got used to, that people will actually be open to opening conversations. In fact, they should be scared of not opening conversations because that's how they offend each other.